Hey everybody, I'm Sarah, the Redneck Bifocal Stitcher. Welcome to my floss tube channel. Um, this is floss tube number 1.5. I did record a whip parade last night and I uploaded it to my channel. And then this morning I woke up in an absolute ball of anxiety and wound up deleting it. So I apologize if this is popping up again for you. If you watched my last one, I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, I've just got to get over this anxiety that I have about not being able to um, present something that's absolutely perfect. Um, editing is something I really should learn how to do uh, just so that I can cut out all the little things that I don't want anybody to see. Does anybody else feel like that? Oh, let me know, please, because I have been an absolute wreck. Um, anyway... I, uh, my name comes from the deep-seated denial it, in the fact that I need transitional lenses. Um, my optometrist told me about seven years ago that I was ready and I told him, no, you're totally wrong. Thanks. Bye. And here I am seven years later and with a new optometrist who told me the exact same thing. And I said, but I have a reputation to uphold now. People know me. I appear in chat rooms in stitch stitch and sip type events and I've got my redneck bifocals on. I can't just show up and stitch without my friends. So anyway, that is how I came up with the redneck bifocal stitcher. Um, I am married to a guy from Preston, Idaho. I grew up in San Diego County and we have settled in uh, Syracuse, Utah for now. And we have two girls and a dog, a Scotty named Maggie. Um, I've been stitching since I was 14. I am self-taught and I have so much to learn even now after all of these years. Um, I have a sewing machine, but I don't know how to sew. And I have all sorts of other crafty things that I would love to learn. And I just stitching is my jam so everything else is a desire anyway let's get into these whips because i have a lot um my oldest whip is angel no not angel proclamation this is crystal christmas from mirabilia designs this is the companion piece to angel proclamation uh, this i started in about 2004 2005 and got to a section with some pretty gnarly fiber up here at the top of the tree. You can see there's some sparkly blue fiber that is really thick and fibrous like um, a braid meets a whisper that's made with, I don't know, tinsel. Um, and I decided I was done stitching with this and at the time I didn't realize that you could use a tent stitch as an alternative to full stitches. So I was really struggling with doing full size stitches because it just didn't leave a lot of room for anything else. And I decided I was done. I wanted to move on. So this is almost done. I have started stitching some of the beads in those lower corners. Um, I've done beads on her dress and um, this other angel's dress. I've done most of the back stitching and all of the whisper has been done on this. So really all I have left is beading and that one fiber, maybe a few more things of back stitch to define faces. But other than that, I really don't have any excuse. So as I've been putting all of this together, I've decided this is going to be my focus piece for the year. I would like to have this done by the end of the year. I really don't think I have any excuse at this point. Um, so by the end of the year, I'm going to pick this up, get it done. And then I'm going to say, but this only took me three days. Why, why did I wait so long? We all do that, right? It's not just me. And the same goes for this, uh, Royal holiday, which is my next whip. I've been working on this since about 2012. Um, I do uh, know that the whisper just kind of got the best of me and I decided I wanted to change. And when you do big pieces like Mirabilia's, 
you need to have something smaller that's a little bit easier, stitches up quick, more quickly, uh, just so you get that gratification of having a finish. Um, so yeah, I've just kind of put her aside and start new mirrors like Santa's magic. <laughs> I've been working on this guy. Well, I started, I should say, I started him in 2015. Does he go this way? I think he goes this way. Um, I started this in 2015 on a 32 count piece of, um, oh my gosh, what is it? It is doubloon from Picture This Plus. I've only said this like 10 times, practicing and whatever. Um, the This was charted back in 1995. And at the time, I'm pretty sure the um, resources were limited as to different specialty fibers and everything. So this piece uses a number eight Krynic braid, which is super, super thick. And when I kitted it up, I didn't think about substituting the number eight with the number four Krynic braid. So I went ahead and started using it. And this stuff is thick like rope too. And I felt like I was just going to rip holes right into this as I'm stitching with it. So my plan is I'm just going to pull out all of this um, Krynic braid right along here and then down here and restart it with uh, number four Krynic braid. And then I'll probably not want to put Tim down. I love these checkerboard patterns that she used early on in her um, designing. Next up is um, Memento Mori from Satsuma Street. I am stitching this on a 32 count piece of black linen uh, using all the called for colors. There's no reason to make any substitutions for this. Um, this, uh, Hannah, my 10 year old has informed me that this will be in her room and when it is Halloween time I have her permission to use it as decorations but then after Halloween is over I am to put it back in her room so it is so nice of her to volunteer to store my stitching for me although this is one that I would probably leave out all year long growing up so close to Mexico I love things that um, are representative of the Mexican culture and this is what it will look like when it is finished. I can't tell, there we go. And then all of the, um, oh, let me show you what Santa's magic is gonna look like when it's done. My bad. Um, this is discontinued as is Crystal Christmas, this angel piece. <clears throat> And then all of the rest of these whips are not in any type of chronological order. Um, I have some knowledge of the fabrics that I'm stitching them on and I didn't write down when I started them because I never thought that I would need to tell anybody. So here we are. These are just in no particular order, the rest of my whips. This is Joyful Christmas from Shepherd's Bush. This is stitched on um, the 18 count natural linen that they use in a lot of their earlier designs. This uses Pearl 5 cotton and then the letters are done in a hand painted silk from the Thread Gatherer. And this is what it will look like when it is finished. And they have, they have several in a series that are like this. They have Joyful Christmas, Happy Halloween, um, Happy Thanksgiving, and a few others, I think. But I really like their designs. And Shepherd's Bush is my, my local needle shop. Next up is um, Wander, which is designed by Katie Landis of the Black Needle Society. This was the piece she designed for their camp Black Needle Society retreat last year. Um, this year I am going again. I'm flying out on Wednesday and I'm excited to see um, old friends and make new. This is stitched on 28 count Lagoon from Fiber on a Whim and the flosses are all from Forbidden Fiber Co. 
Then I have a small start on Miss Bingley's Library from Plum Street Samplers. This is stitched on a 36 count affogato from Fiber on a Whim. And this is one that I saw when I went to Shepherd's Bush to pick up something else that I needed. And I just thought this, this has gotta be it. I'm a voracious reader. Um, my favorite book, um, controversial by some people's opinions, but Fahrenheit 451, love that book. It's my favorite. Um, so yes, Miss Bingley's Library. And then another small start that I have is the Beekeeper from Plum Street Samplers. This is one that I wanted to designate as my travel piece um, for cars, planes, traveling, essentially. And I stitched the border first because I wasn't sure if it was gonna fit on the piece of fabric that I used, and it did. But then when I was on a flight, um, I spilled some water on it somehow, and all of the reds in the border had bled. So um, I restarted in the middle, because that's my jam. And this is on a 40 count silver lining. And I don't know who the um, fabric dyer is, but that is the beekeeper. Then I have Dilio Shade, which is, a which is a design by Mama Witch Cross Stitch. Um, I don't call him Dilio Shade. I call him my distinguished gentleman because look at that alligator sitting there in a tuxedo looking so handsome, so dapper, and so distinguished. I am stitching this on a 32 count piece of black linen with all the called for colors. And this is what he will look like if I can get my iPad to work. Next up is Hang 10 from Raise the Roof Designs. This one is stitched on a 32 count piece of Mississippi Blue from Silk Weaver. I've done several of the clothesline pieces in their series, um, Santa Clothes and Love, Love Laundry. Um, these are just so fun and I love putting them up during the seasons. I'm a seasonal stitcher and an everyday stitcher but I really like this one. And this is going to look like this when it is done. Then on the same um, piece of fabric, not the same piece of fabric, but the same color, I am stitching Nightingale from Mirabilia on the uh, Mississippi Blue Silk Weaver. I thought this was a perfect fabric to use for the Lady of the Lamp. As a nurse, uh, I got super excited when she released Lady Justice because when Nora designs, she kind of goes in cycle, um, like not series, but she'll kind of clump things together. She did fairy tales around the same time and then she does mermaids around the same time and uh, like her season ladies, the season queens, her seasoned ladies. So when she released Lady Justice, I thought, oh, she's got to do a nurse. She's got to do a nurse. And I was talking to somebody on Instagram about it, and they said, well, it's not going to be a while, or don't count on something, something like that. And I was like, okay, well, how do you know? Whatever. But here she is, Nightingale, and I can't wait to do more on her. But you know, whips and squirrels get the best of us. She's gonna be so pretty. Then I have Octopus Garden from Blackbird Designs. This is um, being stitched on uh, 32 count twilight blue, and I'm not quite sure who the designer is. I've got a lot of backlight on this, and I'm sorry, you guys. I've got a lot of backlight. There we go. Um, I'm not sure who the fabric dyer is on this. I 
just pulled it off of a bolt, I wanna say when I went to Shepherd's Bush. I started stitching it on the called for fabric, which was a um, lakeside linen, cedar plank, and I didn't like, it was more green gray than blue, and I wanted blue for the ocean, especially when a lot of the colors that are in this are also greens and blues. And I don't know if anybody else has noticed this, but with some of the older Blackbird designs, the colors that they used at the time are not the same uh, dye lot. Well, not the same dye lots, obviously, but um, some some of the colors have gotten darker. Um, they've changed hue, um, and they just don't quite look the same. I had stitched this tree branch with all of the different leaves. And while you can see the color variegation there, um, it looked like just a big dark blob. So um, I am making some changes, but it's as a very left brain person, it's been difficult for me to do. Um, so I work on it when I'm feeling a little more creative. And I have stitched three other pieces in the Magical Mystery Tour series from Blackbird. These are all super fun. And I have given these to my daughter, Rachel, who is a huge Beatles fan. And then next up I have, um, he used my scissors to cut paper. This was part of the Stitch for Sage hashtag um, that was earlier this year. I am stitching this on a 32 count piece of um, Crimson Peak from Sid Steel, Sid Steel City Stitchers. And it was originally um, designed with white lettering and I'm switching it to black just because this is such a dark piece of bloody fabric. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna stitch the bones, the skeleton and the skulls in white. Next up is, and I almost didn't even include this because I don't even consider this a start, two lines of maybe 15 stitches does not constitute a start, but this is Sam Sock Sorts and Shorts and Such from Raise the Roof Designs. This is also another one of their clothesline series. And this is on a 28 count blue dynasty. I don't know who the dyer is. Um, this was a pre-cut that Shepherd's Bush had available. Um, when they stitch up their model designs, they usually uh, do a different piece of fabric and sometimes they make changes to the colors. And this was one that I saw that they had made some modifications to and thought this was a really nice choice for it. Here's what the original looked like. And um, the colors that Shepherd's Bush usually picks are more muted. So we'll see how this works out. This is super bright fabric, but um, their, their conversions are always really good. Then um, I have Frog Warts, years one, two, and three. Um, I was part of the Magical Stitches group on Facebook back in 2019. I was in school at the time and uh, had to drop because I just couldn't commit to stitching and studying and it just was too difficult to do. So um, I did find out about the Black Needle Society through Magical Stitches and I was able to get one of the first Frogwarts um, boxes that they did back in the day. This is designed by Katie Landis, and um, this is stitched on the fabric that came in the box, which was a 32 count picture of this plus vellum. And it was really cute how Katie had packaged it up. These were in um, envelopes with wax seals on the back, and it was printed to look like our acceptance letter from Hogwarts. Um, I am I started stitching this with the over dyed flosses and then decided I wanted to have a cleaner look, especially on the Philosopher's Stone. Everything just kind of blended together and I wanted the details of all the different facets of the stone. So 
I switched to um, just the DMC called for colors and I like it better that way. And then year two, this is year one. Year two, I am stitching on another piece of fabric. My plan is to connect all of them when I'm done, but I wanna stitch them individually. So this is year two. And with this one, I had stitched the basilisk and the spider in the over dyed flosses and I wasn't a fan. So I frogged all of it and restarted and I'm much happier with how they look. And this is year two. And year three. Oops. Year three, I used more of the over dyed flosses just because I actually had them on hand and thought I could get this pattern stitched up in time to get my full hundred points. No. So um, there is the patriotic Dementor as pointed out by Athena of Stitching Goddess Designs. And this is how it's going to look. Next up is Halloween Fairy from Mirabilia. This is one that um, was kitted up by Hirschner's or Hoffman. I think Hoffman did these and now they're carried by Hirschner's. I don't know. Um, anyway, this is Halloween Fairy. Uh, this came in a kit, so she is stitched on the linen that came with it, which is a natural 32 count from Zweigart. And then I have Merry Christmas by the Letter. This is a Lizzie Kate design. Um, this is a gingerbready colored fabric that is not the same as what the um, model was stitched or what their the pattern model design was. Um, I saw this at Shepherd's Bush stitched up on this fabric and knew that I wanted to have something a little bit darker. This is a, yeah, like I said, it's a gingerbready color. I thought it was perfect for Christmas and it goes nicely with the colors that are in this pattern. And I know this is going to stitch up quickly because it's all words. It's just a matter of sitting down and working on it and not getting distracted by all of the other pretty things that I want to stitch and work on and have started. Um, this is a stocking from Shepherd's Bush. This is Lois's stocking. This is a stocking that I am stitching for my new great niece Sutton. Um, I have stitched stockings for everyone in my family, um, nieces, nephews, cousins, kids, some family in Italy and um, new great nieces and great nephews and my sister's stepdaughter. Um, I just thought that this would be a fun thing to do. It's been a labor of love and I enjoy stitching all of these. I've done all different stockings. Um, I've even made stockings for my girls and um, one has a Better Homes and Gardens stocking and one has a Shepherd's Bush stocking. I don't know if I could do another Better Homes and Gardens heirloom stocking because those are so detailed, so intricate, and it took me almost four years to stitch, which, but hey, my oldest was from 2005. What am I talking about? And this is what Lois's stocking or Sutton's stocking will look like when it's done. They have separate charm and bead packs that you can buy to put all these little dongshis on. Um, sometimes they have bells, um, little jingle bells, um, charms, ribbons, all sorts of stuff. Super fun. And next up is Amira Shocker. This is Eliana. I 
I need a bigger piece of something for a backer. But this is Eliana. I am stitching her on the called for fabric because I felt that the colors just spoke for themselves. Didn't need to have anything additional to take away from how vibrant these colors are. Uh, so the called for fabric is Peaceful Purple from Wish Out. It's a 32 count. And this is one that I'm not stitching one over one skin on. Um, I got it out of my system. I might do it again. I might get a wild hair and think I want to do it again. Maybe, but not on her. Not today. Um, my next piece is, oh, here's Eliana. My next piece is a Mirabilia Shocker. This is the Queen Bee from Mirabilia, obviously. Um, if I had the right to edit, I would. And if I wasn't 25 minutes in, I would stop the video and start all over again because that's how my brain operates. Anyway, um, this is being stitched on 32 count Colonial Parchment from Fabrics by Stephanie. I love her colors and I love the fabrics that she sends. They're so soft and so nice to work with. And this is the Queen Bee. And I love all the little galaxies in her, in her skirt at the bottom in her dress. Love that. Next up is a Mirabilia. <laughs> this is Miss Christmas Eve. I think this is the same fabric as the Lizzie Kate Christmas by the letter that I'm working on because it's another gingerbread color and it has kind of the same modeling look to it. I started stitching her on just a plain, kind of a natural linen because I thought her colors are really nice and the dress is so pretty and then I got into it a little bit more and I didn't like it. And so I Marie kondo that ish and frogged it. And I'm going to save that piece of fabric for something else. I don't know what. Um, and then I moved over to this and I have no regrets whatsoever. She is going to look like this when she is done. Because I will finish her. I will finish all these pieces. Next up is Stephen Kinghouse from Witchy Stitcher. And this came in the Athena's box of horrors. This is all I have done. I started it for a stitching challenge during the Frogwarts retreat. For those of you who may not know, uh, Frogwarts is competitive, um, competitive cross-stitching. I just had a friend ask me about my floss tube on a message. Sorry, I was distracted. Um, anyway, um, they have stitching challenges and some of them are stitch on something with a wand and you stitch for an hour and you count your stitches and you get points for how many stitches you do. Um, this one was stitch on something with uh, the number three and I believe, or maybe it was black, I don't know. Anyway, um, this is all I did. I figured it would be good because these are nice blocks of just straight color one one or two bits of counting and then you're good to go. Um, this is what the house will look like when it's done. And I have to say, I'm super excited for this. I was super excited when I saw it because Stephen King is one of my favorite authors. And um, when I was about 14, my mom saw me reading Misery and she freaked out. And you can't read Stephen King. He's horrible. He's a bad author. He's He writes terrible things, blah, 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 whatever. And of course, 14 years old, what am I going to do? I'm going to go read all the things. So I um, went to my school library where I checked out Misery and I found everything else that I could because, you know, my high school library carries Stephen King. That's even where I read, I checked out Helter Skelter about Charles Manson. That was from my high school library. I don't know, forward thinking in, in California. Maybe that's why I like true crime so much. I don't know but I am white and female, so that also checks some boxes. And I would edit that out. I'm so sorry. I think off the cuff and just speak my mind. So anyway, um, but my favorite book by Stephen King is Needful Things. And I mentioned this on the Witchy Stitcher page that I think I'm gonna try and throw some Easter eggs in here from that book. 
and maybe find a button or two, um, maybe a pair of sunglasses, a baseball card, um, different things from the book that came out of the shop actually. And then I thought it would be really funny if I stitched a little um, well here on the side and had a chat bubble that said Dolores because Dolores Claiborne is also one of my favorite books by Stephen King. I don't know, I might not do it at all. We'll see. Um, but this next one is Winter Rose Manor from Brenda Gervais. And I, because I'm a center starter, I started on that house right in the middle um, where all the really fun stuff to stitch is over here on this side. Um, the house is pretty, but it's also pretty tedious just because it's the same color. You do have some windows in there to break up the monotony, but that's a lot of stitching. That's a lot of house. Um, anyway, this is what it will look like when it's done. I really like this design. And I kitted this up during um, COVID, so it was hard to source everything. Um, this was, I think this is Brenda's Brew, Brenda's Blend, Barb's Blend. No, Barb's Blend. I'm getting mixed up. Anyway, um, Barb's Blend, yes. And I'm using everything it was called for. I just remember it taking forever to get everything because COVID kind of ruined everybody's fun. Not kind of, it did. I should know. I worked in healthcare. Work in healthcare. Anyway, this next one is Sleeping Bee from The Blue Flower. I absolutely loved stitching Quilting Bee and knew that I wanted to do the rest of the bees that she designs. So there's that. This is on 40 count picture, this plus Wren. And I'm doing one over one with all the called for threads, glosses. This is what it'll look like when it's done. I'm doing this for my dad. Next up is Pretty Little Amsterdam from Satsuma Street. Um, I've done a few of her other Pretty Little Cities and this is one that's going to be for my mom. She's been to Amsterdam. Um, she'll be going to Amsterdam for a second time next year. So I figured this would be fun to stitch up for her. I did give her a pretty little San Francisco. She lived on Haight Street during the 60s, so my mom was a big hippie. And uh, I thought it would be fun to stitch that up for her. So I've done that and DC and Seattle and New York. And you'll see those in my next video. Um, here is what the finished product will look like. And then the next piece I have is also a Satsuma Street. You'll see I have my three favorites, my top three, um, Mira, Plum Street, and Satsuma. This is Folk Flowers. I'm stitching this on a 32 count um, chalkboard. And if I ever learn how to sew, I'll make this into a bell pull. If not, I will roll it up and keep it in a drawer until I get it framed. I don't know. We'll see, the world may never know. And this is Folk Flowers. Then I have the Equality Sampler from Plum Street Samplers. Um, I didn't do a big start on this. I think I just wanted to start it for the sake of knowing that I could officially work on it without having guilt because I started it, does that make sense? Um, this is stitched on a 36 count piece of Seraphim old stationery, and I'm doing one over two with all the called for flosses. And I love her, um, Americana, early American colonial samplers that she's done. And I love these flower borders that she's got on the side. And to go along with that one, I am stitching a new constellation. And this one is on... Um, I didn't keep track of what the fabric is, but this is a new constellation, which is uh, along the same lines of the Equality Sampler. She also has Heritage Sampler and one other, but I can't think of it. Maybe she has one other. I don't know if she made it. I'm going to stitch it. 
this is what it looks like. And I, again, those flowers on the side are just so pretty. Then I have, um, I started this for a frog warts challenge. Um, this is incredible. This is an incredible design. And what I've stitched is amazing. It is a right angle. This is actually the border of one of the bottom squares in Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow from Carriage House Samplings. Um, I just needed something to stitch that was gonna be quick and get me a lot of points. Uh, this is the Tom Turkey section. And yes, I am a center starter, but this one, I, I can't. I, all of these come as separate motifs and you put them together. And I just couldn't figure out how to do a center start with this. So um, I bought this off of Stash Unload and it came, uh, this piece of fabric came as um, just an ivory. And my iron broke as I was prepping for this. So I apologize for my um, wrinkly fabric. But this is coffee dyed. I coffee dyed it, gave that a try. I don't know, you can kind of see it. Um, I thought it turned out great. Will I do it again? Maybe, but yeah, I'll let other dyers do their job. I'll just stitch all the things. And then um, you guys, this, this next one, I discovered these a few months ago and they're so cute and so tiny and so I just have to stitch every single one of them. I don't know if you've ever seen them. <gasps> Honey of a Tiny Town. Have you guys seen this? Have you? Just kidding. I know I'm like the 7,456th person to stitch this. Um, I'm going to do all of them because they're so freaking cute. And Heart and Hand is a designer that I have stitched a lot of. I believe this is um, Vintage Country Mocha that I'm stitching it on. It was right there when I went to Shepherd's Bush. So um, I think it's Vintage Country Mocha because this side is printed and this side is not. But again, it's a start and I, I am so on this bandwagon for all of these tiny towns. I will stitch a tiny town for every day of the year if Cecilia ever decided to do that. And then um, this last one that I is in my pile that, well, it's not the last one, it's the second to last, but this last one, I, anyway, we'll cross that bridge here in a minute. This is Bent Creek Easter Row. And this is stitched on a 32 count and it's like the vintage country mocha, but it's the white version. Um, it's printed on, it's printed on this side of the fabric and then you flip it over and it's not. So whatever the white version is, and I, I know you guys have been shouting at me this whole video um, about what I'm doing and what is wrong and everything. So shout out, let me know. Everybody shout one, two, three. Got it, okay. It is fabric, 32 count. And this is what Easter row will look like when it's done. I love all the Bank Creek rows. I've stitched so many, so, so many. And then this last piece, I just discovered this yesterday as I started to um, get ready for my seventh, sixth recording of a whip parade. And I can't believe I've made it this far, you guys. Um, the amount of times that I've wanted to start or stop and restart, um, like the anxiety in my brain, it, it's starting to catch up to me and it's, yeah. You gotta love it. It's great. Anyway, I pulled this off of the Q snaps so that I could look at it in its entirety. And wouldn't you know, um, this is Jack Frost's tree farm from Little House Needleworks. 
and of all the things that your girl could do, um, starting it at the wrong side of the fabric. Look at that. Awesome. And how much fabric do I have left at the bottom, you ask? Only that much. <laughs> I I know it'll work. I know I can make it work. But the desire to, much like stopping this video and restarting, um, I really want to stop stitching this and restart it on the right fab on the right um, orientation. But I think I'm just gonna stick with it and tell my framer that I apologize to her and tell her how much I love her and appreciate her and um, butter her up and bring her chocolate and Diet Coke and tell her she's pretty <laughs> so that she'll say, oh yes, I can deal with an inch at the bottom. Anyway, um, that is it for my whips for right now. Um, Thank you for putting up with my little idiosyncrasies about perfection and the anxiety that comes with it. Um, I don't think that I'm gonna be doing um, a whole lot of re-filming on other ones just because this is my first, I'm nervous, and I feel like I'm starting to defend my dissertation. Is that what they do? I don't know. I will never get my master's or my PhD. My bachelor's degree was enough. That caused me enough anxiety. Anyway, um, thanks for coming along and um, my next video will be nothing but finishes and almost framed. So um, have a great day. Have fun stitching and I'll see you later. Bye!